Good morning, everyone. Today, we will talk about the physics of light. But before we go there, let me introduce to you myself. My name is Rostam Gallas. You can call me Mr. Tom. Well, I love it here in Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan is such a wonderful place. No regrets. I took this opportunity. And now I'm in front of you. Okay, this time, let's start. Okay. So today's learning objectives will be, first, we will find out how to use the law of reflection of light. We will also find out how light is being refracted. And of course, how to use Snell's law to determine the refractive index. Okay, so what you see right now on this screen is the laser beam. When Apollo astronauts visited the moon, they left behind reflectors on its surface. These are used to measure the distance from the Earth to the moon. A laser beam is directed from an observatory as you can see on this figure, so it's a laser beam directed into space from the Royal Greenwich Observatory in UK. The beam reflects off the moon or a satellite in space. The reflected beam is detected and the exact distance to the moon or the satellite can be calculated. Okay, one of the primary concepts that we have to know is about reflecting light or reflection. So light usually travels in straight line. So I'm holding here with me this laser, okay, to demonstrate to you how light behaves. As you can see, all right, it can travel, okay, in a straight line. By the way, additional trivia. The word laser came from an acronym, L-A-S-E-R, which means light, amplified by stimulated emission of radiation. Be careful of the use of this laser, okay? So the difference between a laser and a bulb, an ordinary bulb at home, um, is actually the concentration. So basically the bulb um, produces more or uses more energy compared to a laser, for example. But laser is more concentrated. That's why I never point it at anyone's eyes okay it is dangerous all right now it changes direction if it hits a shiny surface or if it travels from one material into another okay and this change in direction as it hits a shiny surface is of course called reflection Okay, let us discuss this diagram right here. So we have the object here and the observer, okay? So the incident ray, of course, from the object as it hits the surface of the mirror, it is expected to reflect. And that's why we have this reflected ray. And this center imaginary line here is called the normal line which is perpendicular to the surface of the mirror. But we have to unlock the terms as well, the two terms called incident angle and reflected angle. So the incident angle is right here, okay? Um, from the incident ray to the normal line, okay? So there's always a confusion right here, okay? It is very important to know, okay? We must specify the location of this angle. We are actually measuring here this angle from the incident ray to the normal line, okay? And that is the incident angle. And what about the reflected angle? So, obviously the reflected angle is from the ref reflected ray to the normal line. As you can see, they have equal sizes. So that is the law of reflection. Incident angle is equal to the angle of reflection.